Curly Cues, Rachel here from Curly Quilts. Today I am starting my first video in my new beginner sewing series. And today we're going to start off with uh, 10 sewing supplies that you absolutely need to get started. Now this is going to be a very budget friendly list because when I got started into sewing slash quilting about six years ago, I was actually in college. And so I was on a very tight budget, probably not the best time to start an expensive hobby, uh, but you know, so I had a very tight budget and I had to find ways to find either free or cheap supplies. Um, and so I thought I'd gather up this little list of 10 things that you actually need to get started because there are lots of sewing notions out there. Well, there are a lot of cute things. There are a lot of fun, like extra tools that are out there that help things make things easier, but maybe are not necessarily needed when you're first getting started. If you're, especially if you're a person like me who loves to start a new hobby you know you've tried them all you've tried painting you've tried paper crafting and you know buying the supplies is the funnest part right we love school supply shopping you know when you're a creative person buying supplies is just a really fun inspiring time and so if you're on a budget it can sometimes be overwhelming when you walk into the sewing supply store or you're going online and you're checking out all the cute little notions and things like that and you're like oh i have to have all these things no, not necessarily. So if you're on a tight budget and you're needing to know the exact things that you need just to get started because you want to sew for a little while, save up your money, and then you can buy all those extra things, go ahead and stick around. Um, also like and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be coming out with some other videos for beginner sewers. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the number one thing that you're going to need to get started into sewing is a cutting tool of some sort. Now, there's tons of options out there for you. Um, there's also a couple of different options depending on what direction of sewing you're gonna go into. If you know already that you're gonna be a quilter, I highly recommend a rotary cutter. Uh, this is really nice because it's ergonomic in shape, so it's really easy on your hands. As you can see, it also has a safety uh, feature to it, so when I'm not using it, the blade is covered. I can also lock it. So, you know, if you have any little kids or if you're prone to dropping stuff, like I'm prone to dropping stuff, it's nice to be able to lock your blade in place when you're not using it. So if it falls on the floor, uh, it's not more than likely not going to cut you, right? You'd have to get really, really close in there. Um, there's tons of different brands out there. I prefer the Ulfa brand. I started off with a Fiskars because it happened to be in one of those like beginner packs with a, a cutting mat and a ruler and we'll get to those uh, uh, later on. Um, the Ulfa blades tend to last a lot longer. They have a huge variety of different types of cutters and they're pretty affordable in my opinion. Um, and you can find them online, you can find them in quilt shops, you can find them at Joann's. Uh, they have lots of free projects on their website and their blog and stuff like that. So I definitely prefer, personally prefer the Ulfa brand, but again, there are a couple, there's tons of brands out there for you. Um, the next thing you're going to want is a nice pair of scissors. Now, whether you're doing quilting or garment sewing, I think you, I, I still think as a quilter, you're going to want a nice pair of scissors, but especially if you're a garment sewer, you're going to really want some dressmaker shears. And again, there's tons of brands. There's tons of different styles. You can go fancy, you can go pretty if you want to, um, but realistically you just want a nice pair of sharp fabric shears that are going to be able to be sharpened. And what that means is you want to be able to have some sort of screw. You want the blade, if, so if your scissors open up all the way like that and it has a screw, that usually means you can take it to either a sewing machine store that repairs machines, uh, have them sharpened for you, um, maybe a butcher shop that does blade sharpening. So these are two pairs that you can easily go get sharpened. Um, if you have a blade sharpener in your house or your husband does or whoever, um, these are gonna be the type that you want because you're gonna be able to sharpen them because they're blades, right? Knives go get dull over time, so do fabric shears. Um, these ones are really nice. I was doing a rag quilt and these are really nice because they're also ergonomic because they're spring action. So if you have like arthritis or something like that, um, keep an eye out for something like this. Now these ones, I'm pretty sure are gonna be more difficult to find somewhere that can sharpen a blade like this. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. Uh, depends on your local shop, maybe give them a call beforehand. Um, you can also take your scissors and uh, with a piece of tin foil and kind of snip through a sheet of tin foil and that'll help kind of 
bring them back to life for a little bit, but it's not a permanent solution. Uh, again, there's different brands out there for you. If you're going to be spending a lot of, if you're not wanting to spend a lot of money, Fiskars is a really good and expensive brand that you can find at like Joann's and online and things like that. Fomori is another pretty inexpensive brand. Um, some people have had issues, you know, sometimes people have issues with those brands. I don't think it's a brand issue, but more of maybe a user error slash, you know, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, the most, probably the most well-known high quality scissor brand is Ginger. Um, I happen to have just a small little, like a little what, three inch blade one. These are great little snips for doing notches. Uh, for just trimming off dog ears, for trimming off threads and things like that. These are really sharp, like surprisingly sharp, sharp up until the tip. So it's also kind of nice to have a smaller, uh, smaller pair in your arsenal, um, especially if you're going to be doing maybe some handwork, applique, things like that. Um, I also have these. I have like the three different, I have the Tula Pink hardware. She's a fabric designer. She's really, po really popular amongst quilters. Uh, these are really nice too. These are great for snipping threads. Um, I use these mostly when I'm working with my vintage sewing machine. It doesn't have a thread cutter on it at all. So having these close by are really nice to just snip, snip your threads. They're also ergonomic, really comfy and easy to use. So uh, depending on what your budget is, there's all kinds of different cutting tools. Again, if you're gonna be a quilter, I recommend a rotary cutter and that would probably be more than enough to get you started. Uh, if you're going to be doing garment sewing, you're going to want a nice pair of fabric scissors. Uh, and if you can, get both because you're going to end up using both no matter what. Alrighty, so the second thing, let's see, cut this out really quick. Alright, so the second thing that you're going to want to have in your sewing arsenal is a cutting mat. They look like this. They come in different colors. They come in different sizes. Tons of different brands. This one is a Fiskars brand and it came in a value pack. It came with a rotary cutter, the cutting mat and a long ruler. Um, when you, the reason you want a cutting mat, especially if you're doing quilting is when you're, whenever you work with a rotary blade, you have to have something underneath to cut into, right? If you're working on like a plastic table or a wood table and you use your rotary cutter, you're going to be cutting into that surface. And so a cutting mat is going to just uh, keep your work surface safe. Um, it's also going to help extend the life of your blade. And as you can see on this one, it has measurements on it. It has marking lines and numbers and things like that. So it's really good if you're just wanting like a quick measurement reference and things like that. This Okay, so talking about the cutting mat, like I said before, it does have lines and markers for different measurements. Uh, this is something you're going to be able to use no matter what type of sewing you're into. And I always recommend uh, the bigger you can get, the better. Uh, if you have a large work area, a large surface area, definitely invest in a much bigger cutting mat because it's always something you're going to want. Especially if you get into garment sewing though, you know, you're going to be working with larger pieces of fabric at a time and being able to just quickly measure things out or have that bigger work area is going to be beneficial for you. But again, it's all about your budget and it's all about your workspace. I've had this, you know, medium sized one for about six years now and I've been fine with it. So there's that. Um, also be aware there's different types of cutting mats, like there's ones that are that work as pressing areas as well. I think it's like a press and cut or something of that nature. It's usually like a rounded foam with, you know, like a muslin fabric on top of it. You can usually find them at Joann's. I wouldn't recommend those at first when you're first getting started. Uh, one, because they tend to be a little bit more pricey. And two, I just feel like they're not very accurate as a cutting, like as a measuring system. Uh, but it, you know, it just depends on what you're going for. Uh, a lot of quilters like to eventually get those types of pressing and cutting mats uh, because you can like trim up blocks and slash, you know, press seams as you go. So it really just depends on um, what's more in your budget. Um, okay, so the next thing you're going to want to get um, is a ruler. 
I like the big rulers to get started off with. Um, this one came in a package deal with a cutting mat and a rotary cutter. So it was the most cost effective way to get started. Um, starting off with a big ruler means that you're gonna be able to do everything. You're gonna be able to do those big cuts, those bigger projects. You're also gonna be able to do smaller projects and things like that. Um, and so, you know, this is more than enough to get you started into. As you get more into your sewing journey, you know, you're gonna find that there's tons of different types of rulers out there. Usually for garment sewing, you're actually gonna be more in the measuring tape world. So, you know, your regular old measuring tape. Um, these ones, you know, this one's like a plasticky material. So, you know, with heat and time and being rolled up over and over again, um, it becomes less and less accurate. So if you're gonna be investing in a measuring tape, I highly recommend something of a thicker material or don't do what I did and roll it up every time you wanna kinda do the big loopy things. Um, but you know, you're gonna, that's, you know, that's a very cheap notion. You can get these, you know, at the, over on the counter of a hardware store, that kind of stuff. So tape measures, you probably already have one in your house and you can use that if you're gonna get started. Um, if you're a quilter, you're going to find that there's lots of different squares and triangles and, you know, hacky kind of rulers like quick trim rulers and things like that, different specialty rulers. I, I have, let's see, I have three squares. So I have a five and a half, uh, actually a three and a half, a five and a half and a ten and a half inch square ruler because that's just really, you know, those are the three sizes that I've found that I need the most. I use them all the time and I don't really need anything much more than that. I also really like, I really love this one. It's two and a half by 12 and a half. Um, two and a half inches is a very common measurement in quilting. This is perfect for cutting bias strips. Um, it's quick and easy to pick up. It's a little bit easier than carrying around this big bulky thing. And that's actually a little bit easier since I have a smaller cutting mat to kind of use this one. But to get started, like I said, on a budget, just stick with the bigger one at first and then you can kind of figure out what measurements do you work with a lot, maybe what tools are you needing to kind of invest in now that you've you've developed your skills. Uh, this would definitely be the second roller I would go for if you're, if you're into quilting. Uh, as a garment sewer, like I said, tape measure is gonna be your best friend, as well as there's some kind of rounded rulers designed for like cutting out patterns with, on the shoulders and things like that. And so that's its own little kind of world that you'll get into if you're doing garment sewing. Okay, so the next tool that you're gonna wanna need is a marking tool, right? Um, there's all kinds of them out there. There's, there's pencils, there's white ones. This is a water soluble. There's water soluble markers, there's chalk pencils there's pounces, uh, there's all kinds of different marking tools out there. Um, anything, anytime you're using something like a marker, you definitely want to test it out on your material and things like that. I only use this one when I'm not needing to mark a lot. And if I know it's going to be something that's hidden, like maybe I'm going to be cutting on that line or it's going to be sewn into the project, uh, just cause I'm wary. It's, it's never failed me, but I have heard stories from people who've used a water soluble marker and had issues with it. I kind of like to stick to the quilters pencils because, um, you know, they might say they're erasable or water soluble. I find that over time they'll just kind of wear off. Um, and I also use a regular pencil. Uh, again, I'm a quilter. So a lot of the things that I'm marking, the lines that I'm marking are either going to be cut the lines themselves are going to be cut or sewn on or you know the, the way that quilt tops work it's all going to be hidden on the back of the of the quilt top anyway and you'll never see it so uh find what works with you i think a lot of garment sewers tend to use the chalk it's a chalk triangle for marking lines and things like that chalk is really nice because it, because again it's just going to kind of fade away the more you touch it and use it um, but I mean, to get started, I mean, and what's nice about pencils and marking tools is that these are under $3. Um, another popular one that I know quilters especially like are, is called a friction pen. They're heat, they're heat away marking tools. Um, just so you know, those are actually not designed for sewing. 
the friction pins that everyone talks about all the time that you just iron away, those are just regular erasable pins. They're actually just used, supposed to be used for like writing and things like that. And so if you live in a really, if you live in a climate where it gets really cold in the winter, what can happen is if you mark your garment or mark your quilt with the friction pin, you iron it away and then it gets stored and it gets really, really cold, like below freezing, the lines can actually show back up. Um, they can reappear. And so you just have to be careful with those friction pins. If it's gonna be a line that you're gonna cut away, I don't see a problem with it. But in my opinion, I would not buy those for your sewing tools. I would stick with something that's designed for fabric or again, just a regular pencil because you, you can actually erase it off of fabric and stuff like that. All right, so just make sure you use your common sense with that um, and you know, do some research. There's tons of marking tools out there. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money to get a nice a nice marking tool. All right, so the next thing you're gonna wanna get is a seam ripper. Yes, especially if you're new to sewing, you have to have a seam ripper, okay? And again, there's tons of different ones out there. A lot of sewing machines will come with a nice basic one. These tend to be pretty good. They're not bad for just, you know, quick, quick picks and things like that. Um, but as you can see, it's really skinny. And so if you have to do a lot of seam ripping, and it happens to all of us, no matter how long you've been sewing, you're gonna need a seam ripper no matter what. Um, so this is good if I need to grab something really quick out, um, but it can hurt your hand after a while. It's really small, it's very skinny. And so I recommend something ergonomic. Uh, when I first got into sewing, I bought this one. Uh, and this one's really great. I like how long it is. It fits in my hand very well. Uh, the only problem is that it eventually went dull, which it makes sense. I've, I've picked a lot of seams, especially in my first few years, learning how to sew and quilt. You, this is your best friend, really. <laughs> um, I just recently got this Clover brand one. Uh, again, it's ergonomic. I like that it's nice and fat. It sits in my hand really well. It's really sharp. And as you can see here, this little pointer part, let me see. The little pointer part is really skinny in comparison to this one. So yeah, that one's kind of fat. That made it a little bit more difficult sometimes to get into those smaller, uh, smaller seams, especially uh, as a quilter when I piece things, my stitch length tends to be a little bit shorter. Uh, for picking out basting stitches and garments and stuff like that, this is a really nice one too. So definitely, you know, spend at least five bucks, maybe even $10 on a nice seam ripper. Um, you know, every Christmas, tell people you want one of these in your stocking because you're never gonna have enough seam rippers. This is gonna be your, your best friend, especially when you're first getting started into sewing. Alrighty, so the next thing you're gonna need for your sewing uh, is some pins. And again, there's tons of different varieties and styles. Um, you're also gonna need something to hold it in, like a pin cushion. Um, I have three different ones here. The most basic one is your tomato with the little strawberry. These ones are nice because the strawberry has little uh, like beads or something in it and it helps with sharpening, actually sharpening your, your pins. Um, this tends to be the most affordable one. You can usually find these for under $5 at any sewing store. You can find them online. Um, there's different colors now, so you don't have to get the red tomato. You can get like purple and blue and all kinds of stuff. Um, so this is like your basic go-to, probably your most affordable style. Um, I got this one because I thought it was cute. Um, this is definitely more decorative than anything. It doesn't have any way to sharpen your pens. Um, and there's like wood all the way around. So sometimes I get it stuck in the wood. Um, so, you know, this might be cute. You could do like a different, you could do like a design in pins and then hang it on your wall. So this is definitely more decorative than functional in my opinion. It happened to be on sale at Joann, so I bought it. Um, yeah, meh. Uh, but I did just get this one. This is a Riley Blake Magnetic pin cushion and I really like this one because it's really nice when you're doing lots of like chain sewing or you know you have something really heavily pinned it's really nice to be able to just pull out the pin and kind of toss it toss it into there into the bowl and it's magnetic so it catches pretty much everything 
Uh, it's really nice, you know, having it on the arm of my sewing machine because especially on my Janome, um, there's metal right there on the arm. And so this actually kind of magnetizes to the machine itself. And so it's, the, it's not gonna go anywhere. So um, if you have a little bit more cash to spend, a mag I would definitely recommend a magnetic one. And as you can see, the whole bottom is the magnet. So this, this is definitely one of the more quality ones I've seen out there. Um, but if you're just a small budget, go ahead and get, you know, your little tomato pen cushion. You might even be able to find a set with a pen cushion and pens. Um, there's all kinds of pens out there. Definitely, I recommend anything that says sharp. You want to get a nice sharp pen. These ones have plastic heads on them. So, you know, if you need to pin something and then iron over it, you're not going to want to do it with these because the, the, the heads will melt. They do make glass head pins designed for that. Uh, those tend to be a little bit more pricey. So it really, de again, it depends on what kind of sewing you're doing. For a quilter, I would recommend extra long, sharp pins. If you're getting into garment sewing, I would recommend um, uh, like uh, the nail style pins or glass head pins. Um, so that's, that's just gonna be up to you. Also, um, they're not pins, but they're clips. So if you're gonna be doing more heavy duty projects, these are called wonder clips. These definitely tend to be a little bit more pricey, but in my opinion, they're worth it. These are great because they're like little binder clips for fabric. Uh, it's really nice if you're doing like a thick bulky project, if you're gonna be getting into bag making or wallet making, uh, if you're gonna be making like uh, doll houses or stuffed animals. Sometimes a pin is just not enough to hold things together. And I really like having wonder clips around. I use these for when I do binding or if I'm working with like a, um, like a really slippery garment fabric, having clips is totally worth it. Um, again, these tend to be a little bit more pricey. So it really, it's gonna depend on your budget. You can, when you're first getting started, pins are probably gonna be more than enough for the type of projects that you're first getting into beginner projects. But as you, um, move up with your skills wonder clips are definitely going to come in handy and they come in really cute colors too so that's always fun as well <laughs> all right so i believe this is let's see one two three four five so we've talked about five so the sixth thing that you're going to want I think it's six. Okay, the next thing you're gonna want for your sewing room is a really nice iron. I have this Black & Decker, oops, uh, Black & Decker steam iron. I can turn the steam off with a little slider thing here. Turn it full blast if I want to. It's nice and big. It has seven different fabric settings. Uh, so you can have a really low heat or a super high heat. It also has a auto shut off. So if I'm not using it after a few minutes, it'll automatically turn itself off, which I really, really like. Now, as you can see, this is a bigger iron. It's kind of more, for, I think for design for like regular, like I have a wrinkle on my shirt kind of iron. Um, but I really love this because I don't pre-wash any of my fabric. I just iron the heck out of it with lots of steam. And so I like this one. Uh, it is a little bit heavier though, so when you're ironing all day long, it can kind of uh, it can kind of make your shoulders a little bit sore. So if you have any sort of physical limitations, there are smaller travel size irons out there, and I'll try to link those down below in the description box. Um, but if you're going to be, you know, prepping your fabric with an iron first, and you're going to be working with larger pieces of fabric, it's nice to have a big steam iron. Um, they also, and then this one's pretty affordable. It's on Amazon, so I'll link it down below. And, you know, there's a uh, Laura Star steam irons. Those are really nice, but those are very expensive. Um, basically, the easier and more steamier an iron is, um, the more money you're going to be spending. So just getting started off with, I would just get a regular household style iron. And as you move along with your sewing skills, as you're able to save up some money and things like that, you can find different irons out there. Um, I know the Oliso Pro one is a really popular one. It's one that when you set it down this way, it has a mechanism where it goes poof and it sits up. So that way you don't have to worry about it standing like this way, which can sometimes be hard to do 
um, on an ironing board plus that one is a cordless so that's a really popular one I like this one because it gets really hot it gives me a lot of steam and it has the auto shut off I do wish it was cordless but again, cordless costs a lot more money and I, I just don't have that in my budget. I'd rather spend my money on fabric and things like that. So, all right. And then for the ironing board, um, when I first got started, I did not have an ironing board. What I had was a pile of flannel fabric that I folded and I had to iron on the floor. Uh, again, I was in college, so I was really broke. I probably shouldn't have started sewing then. Um, but you know, if you're desperate, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. So. If you have a pile of fabric that you don't want to sew with or anything like that, fold it up. That can be your ironing surface. Um, a standard ironing board is more than enough to get you through when you're first getting started. Most people probably already have an ironing board in their house anyway, because uh, they actually iron their clothes. I don't iron my clothes. <laughs> um, I do if I really need to, but for the most part, I don't. Um, there's also like wool pressing mats. Um, those tend to be a little bit more pricey and they tend to be on the smaller size, but they retain their heat really well. So they're really nice if you're doing quilt blocks, craft sewing, that kind of stuff. But just go ahead and get a nice ironing board. You can probably find them at Goodwill or thrift stores and things like that. All right. So the last thing you're really gonna need are needles and thread, right? Um, and it depends on what, how you're sewing. If you're going to be hand sewing, that's hand sewing needles are its own world. Those are going to look like your traditional style with the heads at the top. They come in all different shapes and sizes, different types, depending on what kind of hand sewing you're doing. Um, so you're going to need, you know, a good variety of hand sewing needles if that's the direction you're going in. Um, if you have a sewing machine or you're going to be getting a sewing machine, you're going to need sewing machine needles. And depending on what type of sewing machine you have, there are different types of needles. My vintage Singer requires Singer brand sewing needles. My Janome can take either Schmetz or organ needles. Uh, there's different types depending on what kind of fabric you're working with. So there's sharp needles for working with coated, uh, coated materials. There's leather needles, denim top stitch cold thing and that's its own video i will actually do a beginner sewing video all about needles and thread what the what the numbers mean why do you want a certain type of needle depending on what project you're working with so you're going to want some needles i like the schmetz those tend to be the best kind of like all over needle but there's inspira there's class a um, just make sure that the type of needle you're getting is going to work with your sewing machine that's why I like to go with Schmetz because they fit most sewing machines. Thread, there again, tons of thread out there. I'm gonna be doing a separate video about needles and thread. There's um, Guterman, Coates and Clark, Dual Duty. My favorite is the Mettler brand. It's a little bit more expensive than like a Coates and Clark, but at the end of the day, I think it's worth just, you know, it's not too much more. It's not like gonna break the bank. It's a really high quality thread. Um, I never have issues with it. Uh, it doesn't break on me. Um, that's my preferred brand. Um, you know, if you only have a Joann's near you, Guterman would be the one I would go with from their store. Um, this one though, this is a Coates and Clark and I haven't had too many issues with it. Uh, my only issue with dual duty and Coates and Clark is that they they wind their threads with shorter strands, and so you tend to have a lot more tension issues, especially if you have a newer, like, computerized machine. A lot of people have, like, tension issues, breakage issues, and things like that. Also, they have plastic spools, and, like, there's a notch where your thread goes when you're not using it, and your thread gets caught up on that all the time, so. But again, it's all about your budget and what you're able to afford. You could always, you know, spend this on a bunch of your bobbins and then just thread your needle with the bobbin thread or at the bottom that's on top, blah, blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> so different brands of thread out there, you know, pick what's gonna work best for you. Again, I'm gonna make another video about needles and thread because there's good, there's cotton thread, polyester thread, nylon, rayon. And so in that video, I'll talk about what type of thread you want for what type of project you're sewing on. A lot more beginner sewing, I'm gonna be doing a lot more beginner sewing videos for you guys. Uh, so go ahead and stick around for more content. Thank you so much and have a good one.